Welcome in the house of the Lord. And we may take our seats. God speaks to his people in different ways. Hmm? God can speak to you in the voice. He can speak to you by voice. He can speak to you <coughs> through his word. He can speak to you through his prophets. And he can speak to you through situations and circumstances. And I believe the circumstances we are going on through as a nation, they are speaking to us something. And the church needs to, to align and come to the place where we can understand where God, what God is saying and what he's asking and we give him. Amen. And I believe he is depending on, the, on his church, on those who know him personally, not just a Christian. But those who have a relationship with Jesus, not just a religion, but those who love Jesus with their hearts, there must be something the Lord is asking us because the circumstances, the way they are, is either we break or we break through. <laughs> Amen. So it's a time of soul searching and a time of waiting on God and listening to God. You as a believer, what is the Lord asking us? Where have we failed? And when we check ourselves, the Lord is going to deliver us and to help us. It's very sad that you are being beaten and you don't ask why you are beating me. <laughs> you just cry and go and say it's okay. And then you are grabbed again and you are beaten again and you don't ask yourself. It's insanity, right? So what is the Lord saying, even in the situations and even concerning this nation? We need to seek the Lord. But today, I want to speak something that the Lord has put in my heart, that even as we wait and uh, as we seek the Lord to know what does he want, where have we failed, what is really happening, huh? there must be a voice that needs to be heard speaking the heart of God in this season. Amen. And I believe in this season, God is going to speak. I believe God is going to speak. Hallelujah. But today we are going, revive us again, O oh Lord, for the labor of greater works. Hosea 6, verse 2. After two days, <clears throat> Hosea 6, chapter 2, verse 2. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. When we go back to Adam and Eve, God made Adam from the dust. God molds a man, carving him to be in his image and likeness. At the end of this work, God does something else. When he fashioned and he carved Adam and Eve, they lie down there. Adam lie down there, but there was no life in him. A greater laborer, and I can see God was looking at him and saying, oh, we have used so much clay. <laughs> the hands are strong. The feet are strong. <laughs> huh? He has strong muscles. They built somebody to be a laborer <laughs> to deal with all the creation that God did put in place. Hmm? So why is God going to revive us today? It's because of what also happened with Adam and Eve. The laborers today, some have been tempted, tested, failed, corrupted. Others are discouraged. Others are quitting. I was reading another documentary. And I don't know where the world is going. Because they were saying... Um, Every year, between 4,000 and 5,000 pastors are quitting. They are quitting 
preaching the gospel. How I pray that I won't quit. <laughs> you know, we share the same sentiments and the same symptoms. <laughs> what affects every other pastor affects every pastor. Huh? It's like, let's say cancer. If, if you have cancer, the treatment is the same. The symptoms are the same. So pastors also, the symptoms are the same. So how we pray God to revive us as he did in the day of, of Adam. So he is lying down there and they are seeing the great laborer, but yet he is lifeless. He can't arise and do anything. They even call him Adam, Adam. He can't even respond. So if he can't respond, how can he go to the field of labor? How can he labor now? He's such a statue that right there on the ground. But God did something special. He breathes into the man. And the man became a living being. Hallelujah. Amen. God desires a laborer for his garden. Someone who would watch and tend over creation in God's place. And for this he made mankind in his own image and likeness. But image and likeness was not enough. Adam down there, he looked like a great laborer, but it's not enough to simply look like a laborer. He had fingers, hands, muscles carved into clay. Yet even that is not enough. Let's read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. You can write the verses, you can go, them, go through them again. And God say, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and of all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let us read chapter 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens of the earth when they are created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and everything, you know the story of the creation, you see, you may look like a laborer. And today we have those who look like laborers. But we cannot yet rejoice. You, cannot, you can look capable, but that is only how men see. But God sees the heart while men look on the outward appearance. When God was looking for a king for Israel to replace Saul, you remember that story. He chose a man from the house of Jesse. God is interesting. We have laborers who already have been sacked, but they still have the title. And uh, they are not doing the job. <laughs> Amen. But they have the title. Kasisi, blah, blah. Hmm? They have the title, but God left them a long time. This one is a very heartbreaking subject I'm talking about today. And that's why we are asking the Lord to revive. To revive those small, tiny laborers and make them great and do the work. Because the mighty have failed. They have failed God. Even in this nation, pastors have failed God. So now, God has to do something. Either stretch his hand and raise the children. Or stretch his hand and touch somebody. And that's what we are looking into this season. God stretching his mighty hand to bring out a laborer in this season. A laborer for greater works. A laborer that is not hired. A laborer that has given himself or herself to the service of God. A laborer that complains not. A laborer that forbears. A laborer that is willing to be sent a laborer that is near like Isaiah to hear heaven confess, who shall we send to Canada? Who shall we send to South Africa? Who shall we send to the Cambas? Who shall we send to this place? And even before they decide who, you've already heard and you've already responded and said, I am here, send me, Lord. That's the kind of laborers the Lord is looking for. And I believe this revival, if the revival will really break through, it will not be brought by people who have names. It will be those who are nameless and titleless. Those who 
are not seen as they can. Because when you compare David and Saul, who would you choose? <laughs> this is a young man <laughs> taking care of sheep. But here this man, he was taller than every other person in stature. Hallelujah. So I believe that uh, God is going to revive a laborer somewhere. I don't know whether it is here or wherever. <laughs> you know when God gives you the word, first of all it's yours, then second anyone else who hears it. I'm saying, Lord, to revive me. To revive me. You know when you talk of the word revive, it means there's a place we came from and God wants us to come back. There's a season and a time and a dispensation that people labored for the kingdom, meaning business. Amen. They were serious. If you knew you were serving in the church or you were serving God, you did it with all dedication, not wavering, forbearing situations and circumstances. But now we have become so fragile. We have gone back to be statues who are laborers, but we, we have hands, but they can't do anything. We have legs, but they can't do anything. We are looking strong, fed, but we can't do anything. God sees the heart while we look at the outward appearance. When God was looking for a king for Israel to replace him, he chose a man from the house of Jesse. So Samuel goes in search for, for a lab, new laborer. <laughs> This is the season that the Lord is going to search for new laborers. I'm seeing a time coming in this nation that those who, who preach this gospel and impact, bring impartation, they will be titleless. He goes secretly, not to incur the wrath of soul. Who had failed in the labor, God gave him by his disobedience. And we saw that in First Samuel. Let's read First Samuel chapter 16. Oh God, revive us. Are we asking the Lord to revive us today? Hmm? Yes. The dedication that was there in the first, hmm? First Samuel chapter 16. Verse 1 to 13. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Huh? The now, like our situations we are in today. <laughs> Which bishop can save us now? <laughs> Which prophet can save us now? Huh? If there are prophets in this nation, we want them to prophesy where the food is. And we want them to prophesy end of situations, right? Because they prophesied and flour was bought for 10 bob. <laughs> and there was no food because the prophets of God prophesied. So where are the prophets today? Where are they? Hmm? Hallelujah. So how long will you mourn for so? seeing I have rejected him from leaning over Israel. Fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. What I love of the Lord is, is that there's no gap. There's no gap. And God knows how to go behind the backs of somebody. Mm. And Samuel said, how can I go if so hear it? You know, that was treason, right? <laughs> because you are trying to overthrow the government. He will kill me. And the Lord said to him, take an heifer with thee. And say, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesus to the sacrifice. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake. And came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? Prophets were feared. And he said, Yeah, peacefully. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. 
sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed. <laughs> yes, before him. <laughs> but the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. You mean there are people that God refuses for his labor? So it means not all are accepted to do the labor, the greater works. I've refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looked on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shama to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this one also. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons. I can see his heart is breaking now because everyone is bringing. The Lord has not said about him. He is looking for a laborer, a laborer that is revived, a laborer that is able to do the work of the Lord. Mm, these ones can be in the army to chase Goliath. But God is, <laughs> they chase each other as if they are playing tennis. Table tennis. <laughs> Today, <laughs> they come, they say, yeah, we have come as the army of Israel. And when Goliath comes, he says, who are you? Then they run. So they can be in the army. But the Lord is looking for a laborer a particular kind of a laborer, right? And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord hath not chosen this. Wow. If I was there, if I was Jesse, I would have broken down. I would have fainted. <laughs> huh? There's no one here. Who is fit for the service of God? And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. So I don't understand why you have not chosen from these strong, mighty ones. He's a young lad. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come thither. So what is the Lord saying? The Lord is going to search for laborers in this season. And he will not sit down. He will not sit down. The Lord is at work. Because his work has been abandoned. So he will not sit down. He will not rest. Until he comes and finds the laborers that fit his heart. And he sent and brought him in, and now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord, O oh Lord, revive us. Let the Spirit of the Lord in this season come upon the laborers. It came upon David. From that day forward, so Samuel rose up and went back to Ramah. Now, when, when laborers fail, what do you want the Lord to do? To start mourning and to sit down? <laughs> we are required like someone not to mourn forever. <clears throat> God must revive us. Amen. We must arise. And anoint the laborers whom the Lord has chosen for himself. Samuel was afraid because the anointing another king would almost mean he was in his gating civil war <laughs> in Israel. If not immediately, then there was one to come. Because how can two kings, remember two kings, all of them anointed. <laughs> but one, the presence of God. The life of God is in him. Saul's house was already setting itself 
to be a ruling dynasty. He had sons that could continue reigning in his place if he died. So he was ready. So how then can someone anoint, even if God has rejected me, I have sons who can take over the throne. That's the plan of man. But the plan of God is different. He anoints another king and uh, ordains another dynasty. Would he not be putting brother to fight against brother? Don't you think so? But the prophets burnt to their own labor. Fill your horns with oil. The wind of God is ready to breathe again into the day, into the clay. David was a clay carved and made in the image, a likeness of God in the secret place. He had hands, but they could not fight. Remember now, he was just in the taking care of the sheep. <laughs> so, atapimana nguvu na nani bale? Nkuna. Pengine simba. And fingers that he did not know war. And we read that in Psalms 144 verse 1. He says what? Praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hands to war and gives my figure skill for battle. Until the breath of God comes on the carved clay, its hands are formed but cannot battle, cannot till, cannot labor. It must receive the breath of God. Then the hands will know how to till, how to battle, and how to labor. So Samuel goes to the house of Jesse, and before him comes Eliab, a formidable young man who Samuel sees and says, Surely this is the king. See, that's what we have read. He is carved and fashioned a strong laborer, a great warrior in the eyes of Samuel, but on God will not breathe the breath of revival in him. God looks at the heart, church. God sees the heart when appointing his workers. And finally, when David is brought, we see God speaks to Samuel to anoint him, and the Spirit of God rests on him, Powerfully, God revives his clay powerfully. The, the clay that he's going to choose for his labor and greater works, he is ready to breathe the breath of life and the breath of strength today. The spirit of God pushed him down from there, pushed him from the sheepfold of his father to the chamber of the king. <laughs> That's what revival does. It will take a shepherd boy from following sheep and put you in a place of authority. The Spirit of God moved him from being a messenger of food <laughs> and a messenger between his father and brothers to being the champion. You remember he was the one to go in. Ah, he, is the, he was the mobile phone, mm. the telephone. So go here, you take there, you bring there, you bring here. What a job, what a labor. <laughs> but when God breathed the breath of revival in him, all that was gone. <laughs> Amen. He became the champion of Israel against Goliath. His labors and great works began until we read of his great men. So we are saying what today? God Revive us. <laughs> the church has sat down just uh, tending some few things here and there and uh, fighting things that don't even matter. Eh? Like the Messiah is killing the lion. <laughs> There's a better labor that the Lord wants us to do. So we are saying, God, revive us again. When laborers are revived, they are then shown the field of their Labors. You see, Adam, God breathed the breath of revival on him. And upon becoming a living being, believe me, he knew automatically that he was to labor in that garden. <laughs> yeah? So what does it mean? When the Lord breathes his breath to the church, to the laborers, there's an understanding and a revelation that comes. And you understand what you are supposed to do. You know, in the times of revival, I, I, when I was born, I found the revival was, that was going on 
I understood it because I was uh, some years there, teenager, in the 70s. Huh? People fought even to clean, to clean the church. It would be who would be there first. They were scrambling to do the work. Today, <clears throat> this chair is not clean. Kwa nini nani anapanguza nga hizi viti? Anafikiria tutaketi yaje nguze etu safi. Oh, nasikia kuna administrator, na kuna evangelist hapo, na kuna secretary hapo. Kwa nini wasifanya kazi na wanali? That's what we are going on through, right? <laughs> hey! Huh? This is the state we are in today. But those times, who must kill Yamungu? The churches were full. Hmm? And they were full people not coming to receive, but to labor. Today, people are full in church. Murudushi wenyota. Kwani zilitoka wapi na zikaenda wapi? Huh? Mumepatiwa kazi ingina mba hayeleweki. Eh? Shetani kweli ananjua kupatia watu kazi. <laughs> but as we want to labor in the field of the Lord. Ay. Sini kweli. Those times, the churches were full, not for people to receive. Huh? Not the people to be solved their issues. But they were full in churches to serve. There were those who were cooking for the pastor. There were those who are who are cleaning the church. There are those who are farming the garden of the pastor. Hmm. Today. Nataka tithi yetu ndiakule. Sisi tubaki hivo. When laborers are revived, they are shown the field of their labor. They understand. So what we are saying basically when the presence and the spirit of God comes upon your life, you understand. You understand your place of labor. Eh? <laughs> it's evangelism for the evangelism team. Hmm? Evangelism is it only for the evangelism team? Huh? So, where you live, you want the evangelism team to come and they speak the gospel. Are you sick in your head? <laughs> <laughs> the evangelism team, one lives in Rongai, another one lives, but you live in Bull, and you want him to come to Bull and they speak to your neighbor. Are you sick in our, are we sick in our heads? There's something really wrong. <laughs> so, the evangelism team of five people will go Rongai, will go everywhere, even to your neighbor. May God have mercy on us. May God revive us. When he revives us, we will not be coming to church to be blessed, but we will be coming to receive strength to go and labor. Amen. <laughs> we went to visit. Uh, we were, one day we were dropping. <laughs> Let me say, Toby at home. Then we get the, the security guys there. So they look inside the car. We say, we are bringing one of you. Oh, we are pastor yet too. Uyu ni pasta yetu, huko anamujua kama pasta. Wa unanjuli kama kama nini, uyu ni teenager. Hapo amewachapa injili kila mtu anajua ya ni pasta. <laughs> yeah, yuko kwa evangelism team. <laughs> Wewe, unanjulikana kama nini hapo? Unaishi? Wewe anjulikana kama nini? Ah, hile muzei hile mkorofi. Eh? Alafu njuma pili, anambeba mbibilia naenda kanisani. Na litutukana njana. In the revival time, <laughs> everyone was a written letter to your home, to your village, and everywhere you went. <laughs> Amen. There's something that has really gone wrong with the church. And we must repent because we are like the, the, the church in the old, in the, in the revelation. We are neither cold nor hot. 
Sisi tunakuanga si, si green na si red watermelon. Huh? And God says you better choose. If you are cold, you'll be cold. But the church today is lukewarm. That's why nobody, there's no impact. We are not causing any impact. So Adam understood the place of his labor. <laughs> he knew Eden was his, was his to tend to. It was his labor, definitely for sure. God brought him to the, God brought to him the animals of the field, to see what he would name them. Don't we read that? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. Let's see. As long as we continue coming here to receive, we receive in your zenu, utalia tu. Chapter 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. <clears throat> Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat. Verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every four of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fall of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help amid for him. After revival comes direction of labor. You see? And God will, will push it to you. He will show you. <laughs> we see his pattern in, this pattern in scripture. Even in the day of Pentecost comes the laborers. They are revived. The spirit of God blows into them like a rushing mighty wind in the book of Acts chapter 2. From there they are given the mandate of their labor. <laughs> you see they were told <laughs> you start from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So who was to go to Samaria? They understood. I'm to go to Samaria. <laughs> so we'll understand where you are supposed to go and where you are supposed and which area you are supposed to be laboring for God. Peter begins immediately. That day, Turo alishuka. He alianza. Chembe yake ni kama ilikuwa imeshika moto. Kanza hapo kuchapa kweli na kuambia njili. Ilichapa pale mbaka. Hey! <laughs> Watu wakaanza kulia wakiokoka. Amen. <laughs> Peter begins immediately by tilling the ground of Jerusalem until the harvest of 3,000 at once. Hallelujah. Wasn't Jesus happy? I can see Jesus smiling and saying, a laborer that is worthy. Other apostles spread about later and took the message of the gospel with them wherever they went. God sends them to their fields of labor. Hmm? <laughs> they don't labor in the fields of another. Let me tell you, if you do my job, <laughs> you will not be paid. What as idea to uh, pro bono services? Ile ya nilimurumia tu nikaona nimsaidie. Lakini tukifika mbinguni, hakuna assistant, atulikuwa nasaidiwa na nani? Kama iko, mimi ndashika moja nisaidie tuingie tu wawili. Lakini mbinguni ni one by one. <laughs> you bring your labor. So, we endelea kusaidia wale wengine. We usifanya kazi yako, hile mungu alikupatia. We fanya ya wengine, lakini unjua utapata kitu. Siku ya mwisho, hakuna zawadi utapokea. Amen. <laughs> we remember the story of Ruth, and know that it was extremely important that she also labored in the right field. The right field here is very important. And when the Spirit of God comes upon us, He shows you the right field. <laughs> but today, <clears throat> the church has become a trade of everything and a master of none. Jungle of all trade, right? But the company is not going to be What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
tunagongania kwa uwanja na hata hiyo uwanja sio yako kila mtu hapa awacho acheze kwa uwanja yake tutakwasukuma mcheze kwa uwanja zenu kwa sababu hapo ndiyo mtapokea baraka <laughs> she labored in the right field so what happened when she labored on the right field what happened <laughs> she could have gone to another field and that would be the end of her story right she will not be remembered as truth the she will only be remembered if she went the wrong field you see like today worship leaders instrumentalists mm. <laughs> wanacheza club na wanakuja wanacheza kanisani so in answer and the rock and the roll and they come to do rock of ages in the morning <laughs> wewe <Where, where? laughs> you'll only be remembered for gleaning <laughs> <laughs> but instead Ruth because she chose you see when you choose you know you are serving God and here the serving God you are not a shared laborer between Lucifer and God hmm? sinikweli but today we are giving part of our labor to the devil we are actually most of the time the church is cultivating shamba ya shetani you know nasikianga kuna mahali wana wanachukua wafu wanawalimisha samba na wanarudishwa kwa kribuji usiku yani kama mambo kama hiyo ni kama inaendelea kanisani yani either mchana tunalima ya shetani usiku tunalima wapi me i don't know what's happening in the church today hmm? and it's very sad let me tell you me the day i know i'm serving the devil i'll just kill him if he cheats me i'll just kill him Mali Yesu alimwachia mimi nitammalizia. <laughs> But today <laughs> people are dedicating most of their time serving cultivating the garden of Satan. Eh hey, watching mangoes how they are <laughs> how they are breastfeeding. Mm. <laughs> Doing whatever <laughs> all hours when they get into that phone Masikio kila kitu iko hapo ndani ya simu. Masaa 5. Huyo mtu hata hajasoma scripture hata moja. Tumelima shamba ya shetani tumechoka njameni. Kanisa turudi tulime shamba ya Mungu. Hiyo masaa unaketi hapo ukiangalia you have gone out and spoken some good news to the person, to your neighbor, prayed with someone, or did something of value. Afadhali wende uze nyanya ulete sandaka kanisani kazi ya Mungu iendelee. Sasa hizi simu tutazifanya nini? Mimi nazilani katika jina la Yesu. Na kama mshirika hapa atasipendi hiyo masaa. Mwe waangalifu, tutaombea upofu. Ndio usikiange tu. Si ni kweli? I hate it with all my heart. Huh? Youth used to be in fire but now they are being given a small garden. <laughs> that you are plowing the whole world ya shetani kakidunde hivi Mungu atuokoe na atupiganie <laughs> sasa tutakuwaaje na laborers wale ambao half of the day wamelima kwa shetani wakikuja kwa Mungu wamechoka <laughs> wamechoka na hii ya shetani umelima ulimwengu Canada ukapitia ukiwa tu hapa kwa kiti ha eh? Malesbia ni ukapitia ma homosexuali ni ukapitia sijui nini pornography ukapitia kila mahali ukalima shamba hata ukikuja kanisani unaanza kusinzia watu wakisema amen unasema amen no ni nini inasemwa hello hata usiku kwa mblangeti mpaka unalala hivi simu inaanguka chini shindwa katika jina la Yesu hey those times we didn't <coughs> Hii technology Mungu wewe ni wanjabu ili professor haiwa ni kweli lakini <laughs> Kama unatumia hiyo simu tumia kutuma messages kwa watu ukiwauliza kama wameokoka watumie ma scripture hati hapo unaona mtu anatuma ati kwa WhatsApp eti mange inanyonyesha mtoto ati inaandikwa hapo ndio watu unasambasa hiyo spending all the money safari kum kusambasa maneno ya mangis Mungu atusaidie na tupe nguvu <laughs> amen so peter understood 
the place of his labor. And he understood when the spirit of God comes, he shows you what you need to do and he gives you revelation and he gives you the strength. So, Peter understood, Ruth understood. So the spirit of God led her to the right field, right? Which should not be remembered as, oh, ule musiana ana glin glin uku. Oh, ule na okotanga maindi uku. Oh. Because she went to the right field. She received great honor and became a great grandmother of David. By extension, she came in the lineage of Christ. God will set his laborers to honor when they labor in the fields he has ordained for them. Here is not a mass bishop to call you etendi akuombi wimu njili enda ubiri njili. Etuwe indasesa. Endo vanyi indasesori. Ha? Kama wea ni muombezi enda uombe. Each, even Peter, knew and the Jews. So Peter knew he was to go to the Jews. And Paul, he went to the Gentiles. <clears throat> Who was to remain with the Jews? God is so interesting. <laughs> to the Jews, but me intellectuals, they were intellectuals. But me intellectuals, ali watumia fisherman. Ha, to confound the wisdom of men. <laughs> so Peter will preach and they say, this guy is not screwed, <laughs> but he's spanning our hearts. And they turn to God. And then the intellectual goes to the Gentiles who are not screwed. So now what will the intellectual <laughs> professor teach the unschooled? I'm telling you, God can do strange things. <laughs> <laughs> Paul could have said, no, I'm the one whom they know that uh, I've actually studied this law, the Torah. I know it very well. You, Peter, you're a fisherman, and me, I sat on a great uh, teacher, Gamaliel, and uh, I'm the one who should be here. Go to your place of assignment. Yeah. Sawa, sawa. <laughs> Go to your place of assignment. What race must they run? What, what cause has been set out for us? We need to ask the Lord. And then we say what? Lord, revive us. When he revives us, the labor will go. The labor will move. When the laborer is revived and set to his field of greater works, they are comforted. The comfort comes when we do the labor in the right field. Paul had been revived. He was Jews of he was a Jew of Jews, perfect clay yet dead. Gold, God could not use him as a laborer in his fields. He had carved hands but could not be used for righteous labor for God. In fact, he was he was in charge of killing the laborers. You remember that story of Paul? He was killing the laborers. And organizing the arrest, even stood to watch and held people's garments who had gathered to stone Stephen, one of the great laborers of the Lord. He was trained in law, but not a laborer of Christ, even with all the training he had received. How many people <laughs> are like this today? Trained, but useless for labor. <laughs> it's good, but useless for labor. Qualified. But again, they are like Eliab, who looks kingly, but God has not chosen him. The outward appearance makes them seem the perfect but choice of labor, but God is unwilling to entrust them. We have many today in the church like that. And then we wonder why the oil of the Spirit does not work on them. Would an anointed Eliab prosper as king? Would he have prospered as king? Would he have gone in the way of Saul or not? What do you think? Maybe he would have done worse, right? We cannot anoint Eliab and expect greater works. 
God must handpick his workers, the ones he knows their hearts. So God does, does a strange thing in the day of Paul of Tarsus, makes the seeing eyes blind. Paul is brought to the place where he can conf- confidently count everything, even his school, even his certificates, as a loss for Christ and leave it all behind in order to pursue the excellence of knowing Christ as the Lord. This is revival of the laborers. God brings their wisdom to its end. When, when the revival comes, he confounds our wisdom because he's the one who is driving us. We are not the ones who are driving ourselves. So because the Lord is the one who is in charge of our life, so we don't fear. We don't fear to go to our field of labor he says, I'll be with you till the closure of age. He becomes their stumbling block. They live like they, they like Moses become undone in the wilderness of Midian so that God can send them back to the house of Pharaoh to condemn for Israel to be free. One of the things I learn of Moses is if God has called you for your field, you better do it or you'll do it. <laughs> And God is not about to replace you. You must do it. Even when you run away, you must do it. Simple. (laughs) Moses, I want you to deliver my people. He attempts, he fails, he runs away. (laughs) Ah, 10 years passed, 20 years passed, 30 years. By the 40th year, whoo, God knocks again at his door and says, I cannot continue like this, Moses. So now, (laughs) we better serve the Lord at this age or you'll serve him when you are going with a stick and the Lord will make sure you won't die until you serve him. So now, why waste time and why waste energy? Because God has only chosen Moses to bring deliverance to the children of Israel. That was the place of his assignment. Amen. The process of reviving of the laborers is intensive church. God must give us grace. And Bishop told us yesterday that this is a month of grace. He must break, break the bones and heal them. The bones that he has broken, heal them. Revive us, O Lord. We shall receive comfort at the end of our labor if we are revived. If we are obedient to the field of our service, then there shall be there shall come days of good report. I want us to turn to the first Thessalonians. <laughs> I have some too few testimonies that I can share with you. My, my process of accepting to be a laborer, and uh, that's why I'm happy, whether I've eaten or not. I mean, I have to be happy. <laughs> I always like what Mr. Warthog, the teeth are just smiling all through. So this girl, (laughs) when I was in form two, the Lord appeared to me. And he showed me doing work, missionary work. And this time we were in Europe. Remember my young girl, form two you are at what age? 14, 15 there. <laughs> and we were in, um, not Scotland, there's another Cal- Cal- island there. I don't know. Island? So, and then uh, I gave birth to the children there. <laughs> so in the dream, I asked the Lord, hey, no way. Me? No way. So actually, the Lord came and we had a dialogue. You know, it's like he came to me tenderly because <laughs> those are the revival times. God used to move even in your sleep. He had to come to me tenderly because my mind can't understand. First of all, um, I'm born in a very far village. There was no internet, so I even don't know where Europe is. You have to go to the map to the atlas in the library. (laughs) 
It's not like you where you are just crossing your leg and ta ta ta. It is there. Oh, oh, I see. You are informed, man. So you should be better than us, by far. <laughs> so <clears throat> I had this in mind that uh, pastors only suffer because even their coats were bent like this. One coat every year in, year out. <clears throat> and then it happened one time, my parents were accommodating one of the pastor who was sent from very far to our local church, AIC. And uh, I could see, because the distance was long, there were no border borders, there were no vehicles, so you would trek, then break the journey, spend at our home, then in the morning he goes to minister. And then I saw my parents give him their blanket because they had only one blanket and now they have to host the pastor. And this really messed my mind up. <laughs> so anything to do with pastoring, it was out. <laughs> Supposing you go to somewhere where they don't wash the blanket, they have kunguni, you won't sleep, <laughs> right? <laughs> Even you, what will you have felt as a young person? Oh, this is too much. So when the Lord is speaking to me, I'm going, oh, no. No, Lord. <laughs> you hate me so much. <laughs> so the Lord said to me, okay, let's calm down, Miriam, calm down. <clears throat> you know, as we were bathed in revival, and the fire consumed us to our bones, that's why even if what happens... We are still revived. Amen. We kept the fire. We didn't lose it. In fact, it increases. So the Lord was like, so now, why will you not want me, to, you to serve me, to serve me, be a missionary? I said, hey, you know? <laughs> then I'm like, ah, Lord, you know, now, if I, have a, I will have a family, where will they be living? And I leave them. Nikienda, nakuta wa mefukuso kwa nyumba maniaje. So we had a discussion with the Lord and he said, you know what? So what do you want me to do so that you can serve me? It was a dialogue. When the Lord comes to us and is speaking to us, we better listen. So the Lord told me, okay, I'll bless you with houses and you will serve me. And it was a good deal. I was happy. Mm. Then you come, you get married, yeah, you build the first house, you do the second one, it's very fast. And uh, now the worker must come and work now. So we were having leaders meeting. And when you are having leaders meeting, <laughs> business was very sweet. By noon, you've banked your money, and you pick your car, pass through Chumi, buy some apples, and some juice, and go home. Life was good. <laughs> and that time, you are driving Peugeot. <laughs> the latest model. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Laborers have been entangled in the forest. <laughs> the weeds have entangled laborers. And today the Lord has to detangle the laborers because of the, the life has been nice, you know. And I'll come here and I'll find the, the resident pastor and the evangelist and I'll, I'll comfort them with some gifts and I'll go back to my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> the way you see me, <laughs> today I can wear and dress three times. Then it was like you arranged them with the necklace and the handbag and the shoes and the cutex. Hello. <laughs> you can't believe. <laughs> God can um, trees and can, can capture his laborer. Hmm? Where? <laughs> that time 
your husband is going all over the world and every time he goes, you have a suitcase of clothes from Brussels, from UK, from wherever. My children never wore clothes from here, to be honest, to be precise. But today, the Lord has brought these laborers to the place where I can go with one jean now, I preach for one month and it will not bother me, even without q tags without necklaces. So I had a big box of jewelry. So now, <laughs> the Lord has come now. <clears throat> we are in the leaders meeting. I've never shared this testimony anywhere. But let me share it with you so that it can encourage somebody. <laughs> so that day, I don't know it was to be done what these others have left the church. The leaders have left those who are serving what. And I'm seated there, and Bishop is talking his heart. <clears throat> then now, God struck. <clears throat> he said, Miriam, do you remember, you know, when you're informed too? I said, yes. What did we agree? I was like, hello, <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> what are you up to? You know what? I didn't want to continue that discussion. <clears throat> I excused myself. I went out to take some fresh air. <laughs> I came back. But I found him there, there. And he said, what, what was our agreement? Can we check it again? I said, <clears throat> Lord, why can't we wait we finish this meeting? <laughs> then we can talk later. <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> Here, Bishop is talking about laborers and... Uh, <laughs> you are one of the laborers. <laughs> and he is grieved in his heart because the work is not moving. I'm like, hello, Lord, can you give me time to think about this? He said, no. What was our agreement? Bring the paper of our agreement. What were the terms? So he said to me, count how many houses you have. He said to me, Miriam, I've done my part. So do your part. Man, let me, uh, let me tell you. <laughs> I wish the earth opened in the days of Korah and I just sing and go. <laughs> <laughs> do your part. Hey, they are the laborers that the Lord came in to deal with and the Lord today is saying, do your part, I've done mine. You say, Lord, when I marry, I'll serve you. When I get a job, I'll serve you. I've done it. Don't do your part. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is very serious. It's very serious. I never ate for like seven days because that thing was very heavy on me. But I decided, yeah, <laughs> the time has reached <laughs> and I have to accept. And I accepted. And I accepted to move forward and burn the bridges. Don't expect this woman to retreat, even in the, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of fire. I'll go through it. Even the waters, I'll go through them. Because I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Moving forward with the labor. Am I encouraging somebody? <laughs> Am I encouraging somebody? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> this one was chosen to serve the Lord even in her young age. <laughs> <clears throat> she enjoyed the pleasures of care for a long time. So I was preaching a message like this in Agar's prayers time. I remember she was seated somewhere there with her sister from UK. <clears throat> <laughs> You know, the time comes when the revival touches you and God breathes through the breath of life. And you count all other things as rubbish. She was a senior officer. <clears throat> she comes to see us. She first came to see me. Mama, you know I'm feeling something. Me, I'm going to retire. <laughs> Ali. I said, you go where? And we want your tithe, you are supporting the church. So what are we going to do? 
there's no there's no income here penny there's no income what are we going to do can you hang on a little bit akaona mimi simusikize akaenda kwa bishop so ikakuwa ni shida so si tukanyamaza ile tuliona tuliona mtu amekuja kanisani amesema meritaya apati ofisi <laughs> living a good salary <laughs> Amen. <laughs> When the breath of life touches the laborers, something happens in their lives. There's a rekindling of the fire of labor in our lives. Huh? God will call us differently. He will allow you some time to grow yourself. Huh? Others you call them from their offices, others you call them from their businesses. But what the Lord is saying I need laborers and I have come. Let us read first Thessalonians. Has that encouraged you a bit? <laughs> I have many two stories that I need to write a book. <laughs> ah, first Thessalonians 3:15. One to five. Wherefore there when we could no longer forbear we thought it good to be let at Athens alone the book of the Thessalonians is a book of labor laborers and sent Timotheus Timotheus our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed there unto For verily when we were with you we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it comes to pass and you know for this cause when i could no longer forbear i sent to i sent to know your faith lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain so we are we are going to ask the lord that our labor will not be in vain when we labor the labor i've given the labor i have given to eternity gospel church it will not go in vain it will produce something hallelujah there will be a fruit and abiding fruit that jesus will show me when i get to him because the impartation you don't know who is touching where is going but we trust god as we labor for god that it shall not be in vain peter asked jesus We left our families. We left our wives. We left our careers. We left our businesses to come and serve you. What will we gain? What did Jesus tell him? He told him this world you shall suffer forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> He said you'll get something, but the final deal is eternal life. and you'll find your crown in heaven. Hello, are we going to heaven if we are born again? Hi, si mwangalio siko se crown. Amen. Verse 6 to 13 of the same chapter. Let's read there. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity and that we ye have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also also to see you. Therefore brethren we are comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith for now we live if we stand fast in the Lord for what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith now God himself and our father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the lord make you increase and abound in love towards one another and toward all men even as we do to towards you to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before god even our father the coming of our lord jesus christ with all his saints when you look at the christians of thessalonians they didn't have much but they supported the mission work with the little that they had they gave out of their poverty everything and they supported 
you see, there are those who are going to be supporters. There are those who are going to be in the field. And all of them, all of them must work together. Amen. So this church really comforted the laborers. And now we pray that in this ministry, there will be those who comfort the laborers in the field of the Lord. Amen. Encouraging us, encouraging the pastors. You hear 4,000 to 5,000 are packing their bags and going away. Eh? <laughs> you want us to pack and go? We will not do that. But the Lord is saying, even the laborers, those who are supposed to support the laborers, arise and do your work. Everyone has a, has a place to labor, as a field to labor. May the Lord revive the supporters and may the Lord revive the laborers. May we stand. May we stand. And I want us to ask the Lord to, to help us with those few remarks, rather. Just lift your hands and talk to the Lord this morning. Do you want the Lord to choose you? Do you want the Lord to send you to your field? Are you Eliab or you are David? David, a man after God's heart. A man after God's heart. A man after God's heart. A laborer with a heart of God's heart. God's heart. Who do you want to be? Moses is dead. Joshua was told. A laborer who was still waiting for Moses to come back or something to appear or another leader to come. The Lord is saying, I've lost laborers. And those who can labor, they are still sitting and waiting, comforting themselves. Morning, Moses has died. And he's saying to Joshua, arise and take the people to the promised land. Many have quit. Many don't want to do the labor of the Lord. Will you hear the voice of the Lord saying, arise and take your position in the labor of the vineyard of the Lord this morning? Ask the Lord to touch you. Revive us, O God. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Tell the Lord today, Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah. Again, sing it again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. As the Lord to revive you for the labor, not to come to receive. But the Lord to impart your heart that you may go and labor in the field of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to revive your heart. Ask the Lord to revive your prayer life. Ask the Lord to revive you. That you may serve the Lord in the way that he wants you to serve him. This is the service of the king. Ask the Lord to touch you this morning. Ask the Lord to touch you this morning. Ask the Lord to touch you this morning, laborers of the king. Ask the Lord to touch you. Ask the Lord to touch you. In the day of Pentecost, they were gathered together. And the Lord touched and empowered his laborers. And today he wants to empower his laborers again. He's releasing his breath again. May you receive breath. Receive breath. Receive breath of revival. In the name of Jesus. Receive the breath of life. 
Let the life of the laborers come back in Jesus' mighty name. Let those who are dead come back to life. Even in the dry bones, we speak the wind of God today to come and bring every bone back to his bone and every joint to his joint. We ask the breath of Lord today that he may bring the flesh, that he may bring the snooze, and he may breathe the breath of life that again we can arise and become an army for God, a labor for God, and never be tired and move and move and serve the Lord. Glory to God. We bless his name, O King. We lift your name, High Lord. We break every power that has been hindering the laborers, the spirit of fear, the spirit of terror, the spirit of frustration. We rebuke every spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of evil. In the name of Jesus, every power and principality that has changed the laborers. Today, Lord, we ask that you may free us and bring us to the place where, Lord, we can serve you. We can serve you, our God. We can serve you. Continue speaking to the Lord this morning. Continue asking the Lord to help you, to direct you to the right place of your service. Which area does the Lord want you to serve him? There are those who are going to serve in the children ministry. There are those who are going to touch the youth. There are those who are going to touch the women. There are those who are going to touch the men. There are those who are going to pray. There are those who are going to evangelize. There are those who are going to open churches. There are those who are going to support the work. Where has the Lord placed you? Arise in the place of your assignment. Tell the Lord to strengthen you this morning. Let the Lord breathe the breath of life to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, our Father. We glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. I am the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, I am the glory, revive us again. Hallelujah, I am the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, I'm the glory, revive us again. Mabi e wana tu akuti nguvu tena. Hallelujah, I'm the glory, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I the glory. Revive us again. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name, O oh God. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray, O oh God Almighty, that you may raise laborers in this season. Men and women, the Lord will serve you. O oh God, we have so many that are getting, Lord, as we have been told, pastors, the Lord are quitting, that are leaving the work of God. There are so many, even Lord deacons and, mem and Lord leaders in the ministry that are forsaking the work of God. Worshippers, Lord, that are leaving the stations. Lord, the place of the assignment, oh God. Evangelists, that Lord, my Father, you called. And Lord God, they are forsaken the ways and the service of God. We pray today, oh Lord, you may speak to us. Ushers, that Lord are supposed to be ushering. Lord, my Father, but they have forsaken their work. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Now Lord, in every place that you have called us to play, that God, you may encourage us this morning. The Lord may arise to serve you. And Lord, be the laborers that Lord you are calling for. That Jehovah, 
your work will continue in generations and generations, in nations, Lord, in communities. Lord, we shall see missionaries, men and women of God, the Lord are forsaken. Lord, my Father, they are their place of comfort to serve you. Oh God, my Redeemer, we pray that we shall find many that the Lord are dedicating their hours. Oh God, in the service of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. That the Father, God Almighty, we will not in Africa continue to wait for missionaries from Europe and America. The Lord, we shall be the missionaries. The Lord, we shall take the gospel of Jesus Christ in the nations. We pray today, Lord, that the Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, Touch our heart, O oh God. The Lord, my Father, even our young, you people, the youth, O oh God, my Lord, that my Father, in their youthful time, they can purpose and say, I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. I will be involved in the nations in being a laborer for the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. If you go with me, still I will follow. You know I'm going with me, still I will follow. No, no, with me, still I will follow. No, Tani, no, Tani. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus no tani pa no tani pa yes it is a time for us to make a choice and to choose to follow him and to choose to serve him and to choose that we will labor for him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is a new month of July. We've just begun a new phase of the year. I don't know what you are able to do for the Lord in the first phase of the year. But as we have finished the six months of this year, you can make a choice and say, Lord, in the next phase of this year, I want to serve you. We want to see the evangelists arising. In the beginning of the year, we saw the evangelists are rising. But we are seeing the evangelists, some of them, and a number of them are weakening. But we pray that the Lord will arise you evangelists, the ushers, the worshippers, the youth leaders, 
in the name of the Lord, the women leaders, in the name of the Lord, the children ministers, oh God Almighty, the Lord God give you a dedication. It's a time for dedication in the name of the Lord. As we begin this new phase of the year, the second phase of the year, you can dedicate yourself to the Lord. In the beginning of the year, the sixth month, there were books to be written. There are things to be done. There are assignments to be done for the Lord. Yes, you did so many things for yourself. So many people only think about what they can do for themselves, but not what they can do for the Lord. Today, this morning, may the Lord challenge you. May the Lord encourage you. And you say, you can do something for the Lord. I will do something for the Lord. So nobody comes with me, I will follow. So nobody does it. So nobody, no evangelist shall arise. I will be the evangelist of eternity. So nobody becomes a worship leader. I will be there to worship the Lord. So nobody is there for the media. I will be there for the Lord. In the name of Jesus, you can dedicate yourself. There are no, no intercessors are rising. I will be the intercessor for the ministry. So nobody gives, I shall give to serve the Lord. You can dedicate yourself yourself this morning. You can dedicate yourself this morning and you can play a role. You can stand in your place. You can say I will do it for the Lord. I will be the worshiper. I will be the hasha. I will be the one that shall do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can give yourself there's so many things that you can do for the Lord. You can share the gospel. You can bring somebody to Jesus. You can speak about him. It's a time for crying to God. It's a time for dedication. The Lord renew your strength. The Lord called you. The Lord called you. If the Lord has given you breath. The Lord has given you life. We have seen in this week so many people perish on our road. But you are alive today and you can serve the Lord. And you can do something before you depart in this world. You can do something for Jesus. You can do something. You can do something. You can serve the Lord you can do it for the Lord. Many people today, they are so weak. It is just about themselves. It's just about their feeling. It's about how they have been hurt. It's about how they have been offended. It's about how they have not been blessed. It's about their blessing. It's not been about others. How Fanya, 
fanya kazi fanya kazi ya bwana ita fanya fanya kazi fanya fanya kazi fanya kazi ya bwana nitafanya nitafanya fanya kazi fanya fanya kazi fanya kazi ya bwana Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In this mood of prayer, as we come to the close of this first service, I hear in my heart that Lord God calling people, some people, to a greater responsibility, to a greater responsibility for this ministry. There are ah, people, hallelujah, that the Lord is calling them for a greater responsibility in this ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. You know, in a ministry like this, they must reach to a place where there are people that are prepared to take a greater responsibility than just being there. Hallelujah. Bishop and Reverend Miriam have taken a greater responsibility. Hallelujah. To lay down their lives for this work. And I believe there are people also here today, this morning, that the Lord has been speaking to them to come to a place where they can take a greater responsibility for the work of God. Hallelujah. A greater responsibility. Some of the ministries, they have what we call trustees. People who have reached to a place that they can be called upon as trustees for that ministry. That they are ready to take a greater responsibility hallelujah hallelujah yeah people are not passers by people are not waiting upon the lord for the next phase of their calling but people the lord has been speaking to them that they can be able to be counted not only now but in the generations of this ministry Hallelujah. They can be counted on. See, some of us, like myself and Mama here, we are not going anywhere. We are here. We are here until they do us part. Hallelujah. We have taken it to that level. Hallelujah. And we have been, we are trusting the Lord. We are trusting the Lord. We have seen someone like Jonathan here, Maingi, who has been here for the last 20 years and is counting and is moving on. And I believe that even today there are people here who are prepared to take a greater responsibility for this ministry. Hallelujah. A greater responsibility. Hallelujah. The Lord said to us, we will not be very much in a hurry to lay hands on people. We will not be in a hurry to lay hands on people who are not ready to take a greater responsibility. Hallelujah. And this morning, as Mama was speaking, 
She was in her place. She was in an office. She was, there are many times when I began the ministry, and many times even when we began the ministry, she was not a pastor. She was not a reverend. She was just there as a wife of a pastor. But as we continue the journey, we continue, the Lord continue to speak to her to take a greater responsibility for the work of God. A greater responsibility. And this morning, there are people that God has been speaking to you about taking a greater responsibility on this ministry. It may be two, it may be three. It doesn't matter. The work of God does not go with multitudes. Hallelujah. And I am not calling you in front here, but I want you to talk to me. If the Lord is speaking to you to take a greater responsibility in this work, Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Lord is calling on us that we will have pillars, men and women, that can bear the burden of the work. That if Reverend Miriam and Bishop are out of the country, that you can be able to be able to hold the work of God. And you can stand with the work of the Lord without wavering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you have reached your place. That you have resolved with your heart and mind. That this is a ministry the Lord has given you. That it is you are not just a visitor here. That you are not just coming here to look for a blessing. That you have sold your heart to serve the Lord in this ministry. Hallelujah. That's the place I'm looking for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to thank God because God has brought people and they are people. The Lord has been speaking to me that it's a time that we allow, that we give people a greater responsibility because they are there and they have come. One else was a few. One else was a few. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have seen in ministries. We have gone to ministries and we have seen ministries where people have taken those ministries and they have laid down their lives for those ministries. And today those ministries are standing on pillars of men and women that have laid down their lives as laborers and the co-workers in the work of the Lord. One as if you will. We call them the co-workers. Remember the Bible talks about Paul was having Aquilas, okay? Isn't it? Hallelujah. As co-workers, men and women that became co-workers with them. And I believe that the way the Lord is speaking to us this morning about people who are ready to take a greater responsibility the work of the Lord in eternity, gospel church and ministries. If the Lord is putting you that in your heart, please make sure that today you see me uh, before you go home. I want to pray with you. The Lord has placed that in your heart. Hallelujah. That the time before you, the years before you, hallelujah, that you have decided to take a greater responsibility in the work of this ministry. Hallelujah. Then that will be a very important uh, prayer for us today. Hallelujah. Let's speak to God. 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 Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you because there are men and women in this work. The Lord God, my Father, they don't come here to be blessed. But Lord, they came to serve. The Bible says, and Jesus came to serve. And Lord, my Father, Jehovah, render his life as a ransom to many. Father God, I know that Lord, even in this ministry, and even now, there are people, Lord God, that have not come here to be blessed. The Lord, they have come here as co-workers in the work of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. And the Lord, they are laborers. Oh God, my Father, and their Lord, you are speaking to them about taking a greater responsibility. 
a greater responsibility in the labor of the work of the Lord. Oh God, my Father, I pray that Lord, those who have laid that word are spoken. Oh God, my Father, may they, oh God, may they be able to come out. The Lord, oh God, my Father, you may lay this greater responsibility upon their lives. We give you praise. We give you worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Partaking of the work. Partaking of the work. That you are not just partaking of the blessing, but you want to partake of the work. You want to partake of the cup. You want to partake of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord God be glorified. May the Lord God be glorified. May the Lord God be glorified. We bless your name, O God. We thank you because you are God. We exhort you, Lord. We exhort your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. I, I feel it. I sense it. I know that God in his season. Hallelujah. Amen. One day. Have you ever imagined one day? Okay. When Bishop and Reverend Miriam are not in this world. Okay. Who will continue with the work of the Lord? Are there people here? who are able to bear the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? Amen. We are not dying. Not very soon. We are here for many, many years. But the Lord has been speaking to us about different nations of the world. And we want to go and raise some work. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we are being caught with Ethiopia and India and places. Hallelujah. God is good. Some of you are powerful preachers. Some of you are powerful women of God. Hallelujah. So I want you to start thinking deeper about your responsibility, taking a greater responsibility in the work of God. Hallelujah. People who take greater responsibility, hallelujah, they come very early because you know anything can happen, hallelujah. And they are ready with a message, hallelujah. The other day I said men should prepare themselves to come to church to pray at 7 o'clock, hallelujah. One man has been found worthy and is coming at 7 o'clock and pray. I pray that there are many other men who will take a greater responsibility, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So that we can take the work of the Lord forward. Hallelujah. I was told about a story about this old man. Old man who came from, he was doing a lot of work in, 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 in China. Great work. And he became so old because he began doing that work when he was a young man. So he became bent and he was walking with a stick. Okay, you know, bent like this, walking with a stick. And he came back to Europe. There was a big meeting of the young people. And he was preaching there. And he was sharing the work of the Lord he has left in China. Okay. And he told the young people, now I'm so old. I'm not able to continue with the work. And he said, is there anyone here who is willing to come and take a greater responsibility and take on this work? And go to in China, continue with the work. And he asked first time, he said, is there anybody? The second time, is there anybody? Come forward. He said, the third time, is there anybody? And there was nobody who came forward. And the old man with his stick, he said, I'm going back. I'm going back. Praise God. Hallelujah. May there be somebody that we may not have to go back. But the old man had to go back because there was nobody. 
Amen.